Okay, now I'm joined by Dr. Vincent Valente. He's the Assistant Medical Director for Emergency Medicine at Advent Health Altamont. Altamont Springs. Yeah. Altamont Springs. And um, he's got a lot of expertise in emergency medicine, and he was actually the physician that saw Jordan Smelski five, okay. six years ago, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome, Dr. Valente. I appreciate Thanks, you ch dropping by. Um, can you give the audience your perspective on the role of the ER physician with a potential meningitis case. Absolutely. When a patient presents to the emergency department, um, they, hit, they go through a triage process. Um, they meet a nurse who actually gives us initial information um, about what the case, uh, what the presenting case is. Um, and then from there, the emergency role, uh, the, the role of the emergency physician is to take that information and also talk to the patient about what's bringing into the emergency department. So, for example, a patient like Jordan, for example, presented, um, comes in with potential headache, fever, neck stiffness, signs of meningitis that we all know. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I think, is the role of now, when I, I was the physician taking care of Jordan at the time, um, and being more aware of asking the question, if you had a fresh water exposure or have water exposure, um, could things have been different? It's possible. Um, and so the role of the emergency physician is actually to basically be the first person in the line, along with the triage patient, the uh, uh, triage nurse, to come up with that potential uh, risk of this of, the, of this disease. Right, so when, that was meningitis in general, but general, yeah, so ru ruling out in the glaria fowleri, what, what, what's the role of the ER doc? Right, so it is really asking that question. It's, it's asking the right question at the right time. Um, and that is water exposure is on top of that. We see every, a lot of people are coming through the MERS spot with headaches and fevers and gosh, uh, it could be hundreds a day sure. in my department. But it's asking the right question. And that one question is, like I just mentioned, was have you had water, water exposure? And if that's true, then it's my job to notify the lab. And if the lab comes back saying, yes, there is a amoeba, and my job next is alert all the specialists that are involved. And it's a complex system. You're talking about neurosurgeon, um, intensivists, and also ID doctors mm -hmm. to get this on board. Because this is when this disease is, um, is recognized to be true, it has to be an immediate response for all the right. staff. You're right. talking to, and also going back to the family and talking to the family about what's the process going to involve. Um, and understand that at that time, you're looking at a healthy person and what the outcome could be within five days, and they might not be with us if we do not act on this appropriately. Right, right. so in, in your hospital um, mm -hmm. as an ER doc, what is the treatment protocol that you guys use? So what we would do initially when a person came into this uh, into our facility and this was recognized, we'd actually have to call the infectious disease doctor immediately let them know. At that time, it's implementing um, antibiotics getting the tifazone, which is the medication, letting them know we need to take that immediately. Um, starting the regular medication for um, meningitis is like rocephin um, and vancomycin, but also you're talking about getting um, azithromycin on board, uh, amphotericin, different medication like that. But the key thing right now is gonna be more intensive that you can do in the MERS department, that's getting to the critical care suite and letting the, the other teams take over from there. Yeah. Um, concerning, I know part of the protocol sometimes is putting into an induced coma. Yes. Is, is that something that you attempted in the past? We would initiate that yeah. in the department, depending, and we'll talk with the intensivist if they want us to start that process. Sure. And that would be getting permission from the family to electively um, sedate and intubate and put them a patient on a mechanical ventilation to start that process and the cooling process. Um, and so that would be kind of on the, uh, on the guise of uh, talking with the specialists and doing that all because it all depends how fast we get that uh, to the um, to the intensive care team. Yeah. And lastly, sure. any advice for parents or people in general um, of what they should tell the emergency room when they arrive? That's a great question. Um, it is that exposure. You know, I think what's great about this summit that we're at today is awareness, yeah. awareness and prevention. Um, and they're exactly right, it's 100% preventable. Uh, preventable. Um, but when it, they do have that concern, it's letting the physicians and nurse staff know that there was a water exposure somehow. Yeah. 
And um, we always think fresh water, lakes, there's other ways of doing this, slip and slide, tap one, it's amazing, some of the things, that neti, pools, neti pots. Neti pots. Yeah. Um, if there's any possibility that this is there, because we need to let the lab know that we're aware of. So if the parents let us know, even some doctors won't ask this question, that's the, if that's the, that's the situation, that's what we're here for, yeah. to get this word out, um, is let the family know, they ask, they tell them that the, the physicians and the nursing staff that they had some exposure to water. Excellent. Dr. Vincent Valenti. Yes. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.